Okay, so right here you got a species of plant called the Pia splendens, and it's in the coffee family. Now the genus the Pia has about 25 to 30 different species in it. Uh, I believe this is one of the only ones that's actually uh, extinct in the wild. It was found by a man named Dennis Breedlove, who used to be over there at the uh, Striving uh, Botanic Garden over there in San Francisco. I think he found it in the 80s. And uh, story goes he found it, uh, realized that... You know, it was something new to science. They actually collected propagation material, which is where uh, these plants came from. And then uh, he went back to maybe a couple years to a decade later and found out that the cloud forest habitat that it grows in had been completely annihilated uh, to make way uh, for the human tumor. You might be familiar with the human tumor. Uh, most of us uh, are completely ensconced in it. You know, it's just that uh, we're 8 billion strong now. And so, you know, make way for the most important uh, species uh, in the world, or at least uh, so we think. Anyway, regardless, this plant is now... Uh, functionally extinct uh, it is it's extinct in the wild and it, there might be a population or two hiding out somewhere in those cloud forests of Chiapas but uh, who knows you know your guess is as good as mine uh, people have searched for it haven't found it yet so these are the flowers uh, you know typical uh, Rubiaceae thing going on you got those salverform corollas elongated corollas tubular corollas they're pendant probably pollinated uh, by hummingbirds uh, in their native habitat and there is uh, you know hummingbirds are entirely native to the Americas, you don't get any outside of the America, South America or North American continent. Uh, but uh, they, you know, they, they basically go to town on those those long to I think it's long and tubular. You get the nectary down there. Remember, since hummingbirds have those long beaks, uh, you could tell, especially if the flower is red, which this is not. This is yellow, but it does have that salverform corolla. Uh, quite a few things in Rubiaceae, the coffee family, are pollinated by hummingbirds. So there you go. You get the nice calyx, and at the prominent corolla and then just the stamens and a little stigma poking out of there so anyway there's a couple more of those again this is the pia splendens and the thing that's nice about this thank god dennis breedlove collected some of the propagation material because otherwise uh, we wouldn't be looking at this right now uh, this this plant does uh, remarkably well uh, in propagation it uh, you know grows from seed pretty easy grows from cuttings pretty easy you can see it's a small shrub doesn't doesn't often get taller then maybe eight or ten. So again, the genus the P, you got 25, 30 species, entirely new world that is west side of the Atlantic. They go down into uh, South America, Central America, Mexico, etc. and what the shit. Uh, you know, basically this thing where this grows is a cloud forest habitat. They got, you can see they got the sprinklers on in the garden here because they got to water this bastard in the summer since this is in a, you know, this is in a summer dry area. It don't rain. Everything's kind of looking like shit. Bay Area is in a, in a, hot spell today it's about 95 degrees which i know a lot of you laugh at it is kind of ridiculous but you know for the maritime climate sensibilities of the people out here that shit's hot 95 is hot and you get a nice you know you look out over the city you get a nice uh, balmy uh kind of brackish humidity that kind of smells like hell with the diesel exhaust and then you mix it up with the smell of the shit plant and uh, all the tire dust and brake dust it's, yeah, it's pretty nice so uh, you know they got a water here but you know where this thing grows uh, where it's native to, of course, they would be getting, you know, just a dumped on in the summers. Chiapas cloud forest up there, you know, you got pines, oaks, magnolias. They'd be getting dumped on in the summers. They get all those nice uh, tropical storms that uh, get a lot from the Gulf of Mexico, etc. You know, so you got those warm ocean currents that just all evaporates and then just dumps on these some of these cloud forests. Pretty amazing habitat. Again, this uh, this species is, is functionally extinct. I mean, it is extinct in the wild. Uh, because it, you know the the habitat it grow on it grows on was basically demolished for probably cornfields and agriculture, etc. So you just can expect to see more of that. I'm sure in our lifetime, you know, there's going to be plants I've probably shown you uh, that won't be there in 40 years. You can think of a few off the top of my head. Anyway, so I was just saying, you know, it's uh, you know the, the human tumor, etc. We're all uh, kind of you know it's, it's basically being sheltered from nature you know the the real world the real world of course being the world that's been here for millions of years uh, versus the world we just made up in the last 100 200 years with the billboards and the freeways and all the ugly shit parking lots retail economy etc uh, just you know absolutely no ability uh, you know for self-regulation or control whatsoever so we're going to see more of that but uh yeah, it's it's a shame too because it's uh you know, I think that's what makes people stupid, basically, is being sheltered not only from nature, but just from the world in general. You know, all the racism you see, that's mostly caused by people not traveling, not experiencing other people. And then, of course, take that to another level and think about just the amount of people uh, 
who have no idea that any of this shit is out there, don't care. Their, their world just pertains to what they know, just which is, you know, working a job you, you hate, try, commuting two or three hours to work every day. In a, it's a depauperate existence, and my sympathies are with you. By no means am I shitting on you. I'm just saying it's, it's fucking sad and tragic. So that's why, you know, I make a couple more of these videos, show you more shit like this, and uh, maybe get people excited about the world, get a, get a wider perspective on the world instead of this depauperate, uh, narrow view uh, you know, just completely oblivious to what else is out there. There you go. There's they, a real nice specimen. They got four or five of these. And they got some good genetic diversity, too. Uh, you know, since the, they, they collected a number of seeds when they originally discovered this plant. And they went back, collected another round. And, uh, oh, there's the sprinkler. Anyway, they went back, collected another round. So they got some pretty good genetic diversity. And, uh, you know, like I said, they're collecting, they collect the seed off these. But again, this, this highlights the importance of preserving this shit when you find it. Because, you know, the tumor is growing. The tumor is growing. Uh, and many of you uh, might like that fact. You know, I think it's kind of a shit for brain's approach to it all. But uh, uh, anyway, this thing would be completely extinct were it not for botanic gardens, uh, etc. You know, and of course, you, you know, when, normally when you're describing this stuff, they want you to put it in a way so that the idiots can understand. You know, so you, they normally talk about economic importance, uh, anti-cancer properties etc. Yeah, you know, similar bullshit. But that shouldn't be the main reason for preserving this stuff. Uh, the main reason to preserve this stuff is because it took millions of years to evolve. It's part of the intact ecosystem in which it evolved. And, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, yeah, I guess the chemistry is important, uh, but, uh, you know, just respect it for what it is. You know, I respect it because when I look at it, uh, it, it makes me uh, not want to die. You know, whereas if I'm you know, stuck in traffic on a freeway, uh, you know, seeing any of the mouth breathers that constitute most of the uh, population uh, here in this country, or uh, really any other country, it's not country specific. Moronics is a whole, just are a large part of our eight billion strong population now. And when I look at this stuff, it, it you know it kind of brings me back down. I mean, the living biosphere is when you think about it is really our only connection to sanity, you know, because you know, the world is generally shit. At least the human world, uh, most people are either batshit insane, uh, kind of assholes, or dumb as hell. You look at our closest relatives, and that'd be the chimps. They're fucking insane too. So you know you really can't uh, you can't go to humanity for most of your happiness, you know, because at least or at least your sense of fulfillment. You get your little circle of friends, but you know I think we're on a, just kind of a general decline, a general gradual. You the hand movement there, so you could visualize it. You know, a, just a general decline. You know, especially as we get more and more people, we're just going to turn this planet into a big barren, dusty ghetto, and uh, there's little stopping it. But at least there's a little bit of sanity and shit like this. So, uh, you know, in eight or nine million years, when the biosphere is recovered from the mass extinction that we're uh, presently causing, uh, and yes, the planet will be okay. The, the actual rock will be okay. It, there's going to be a lot of shit that doesn't pull through, though. We're going to see a lot of stuff that won't be here in 100, 200 years. Uh, this is a good example of one of them. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of rambling now, but you'll be fine. Just fucking hit the unfollow button or, you know, fast forward if you don't like it. I don't want to hear you whining and complaining. So anyway, uh, is, is, you know, things progress, there'll be less of this stuff, but the importance, of, of course, in these gardens is uh, preserving it, you know. It's, it's why it kills me, you know. It's like, a, it's like an online rectal exam when I think about botanic gardens, uh, or any museum, really, uh, being, you know, less, there's less of an emphasis on science. There's a fucking heat spell in the bay we're getting these days. So I did Sarawi is not doing too well. Anyway, um... I was saying, you know, with museums, botanic gardens, there's less of an emphasis on science these days and more of an emphasis on the lowest common denominator. Just basically making these places theme parks, uh, normally for the rich, or, you know, if you some of the museums in Chicago, you're making theme parks for suburban, suburban tourists as opposed to uh, institutions to benefit the greater good and basically reduce the amount of morons present in society by educating them, you know? I, I tend to prescribe to the belief that you know, people aren't necessarily born stupid, they just don't uh, have access to education. So, that's why I make these shitty videos, these silly videos, uh, obnoxious videos, and that's why I deal with some of the shit for brains comments uh, you see in the comments section every now and then. Especially the mean ones, I like reading those. Regardless, uh, hopefully you got some out of this today. There you go, the Pia Splendens, everybody. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day, go fuck yourself, bye. Holy shit, look at that, Roos Mulleri from the Wave of Leon State. Oh... It's the only thing that smells. There's the only thing I can smell right now. It's the only thing going off. Huh? Look at it.
Trichocerus tershekii, Echinopsis tershekii. They can't decide what fucking genus it's in, but it's South America. I'll tell you that. Ruth Mueller, you like the chlorophyll stuff? Do you like it when it's chlorophyll? I love it when it's chlorophyll. I fucking love this goddamn plant. Oh, it's... What do you think it grows on limestone? Hey, do you have some limestone? Look at those little flowers, sumac flowers. I tell you, man, some of the, some of the uh, you know, the uh, Mexican uh, sumacs, those will be your gateway drug to the Anacardiaceae, the poison oak family, you know? Not all of them are mean. Some of them are nice. Not all. Not all are mean. Not all are hate value. You rush y'all in their tissues. Just some. God, that's a fucking beaut. Look up Bruce Lentier over there in Baja. That's a nice one, blue-leaved. And they're extremely successful in the arid areas and the xeric areas. You get a lot of sclerophyllous. Yeah, sclerophyllous just means that you got the hard, thick leaves. You know, ideally adapted to subtropical or xeric environments. Mostly subtropical where it gets really hot and it, it'll rain, but then it dries out so fast. Love it. Sclerophyll forest. This is this is a nice spot. You find some solace here, huh? You sit the fuck down, you just calm down. Look at you got a nice little bench. You sit down, you just chill out, you know? And you feel really turned up, huh? Anyway, this is Metasequoia glyptus terboides, and these were some of the first seedlings to be grown after this plant was quote discovered by Ralph Cheney as paleobotanist in the uh, in the 1940s. You can see they're doing pretty good, they're pretty big. Almost 120 goddamn feet tall. It's a deciduous redwood. These will grow in Chicago and they'll grow in New York City. Even some up in fucking Minneapolis. Relatives of bald cypress, not too close, but close enough. And uh, they, drop their, they drop their needles in the winter. So you hit October and November, and this shit turns orange, sometimes a beautiful red, and it drops off. Real easy to grow from seed, too. They just, you gotta keep them wet. They do better, these will do better in the Midwest and in the East Coast where you get those summer rains than they do out here in California because it's so goddamn dry. You know, a lot of them die out here. See, they got a water. You see? See what this shit? Anyway, more people should grow these. You can buy these online. There's far more in cultivation. I think there's only 5,000 in habitat in the wild, but there's millions, probably a million in cultivation. They grow them all over the spot. And it's become a, a point of national pride for China, which you wouldn't think China had much national pride about their environment, uh, being how they treat it, which is like utter shit. But uh, apparently they, made, they even made some postage stamps. Huh? We'll cut down a forest, but we'll put it on a postage stamp, and then you can... You know, how's that, you know? So you can't see it. It might be extinct soon, but at least you have a little postage stamp and a commemorative plate or some shit. Hang it on your wall. Oh, yeah, Smolanthus maculatus. From Chiapas. Almost 20 goddamn feet. Did you think, uh, you, did you know sunflowers could get that tall, huh? Almost 25 fucking feet tall. Look at this, look at this stem. I want to show you this. You like this. Look at it. Got a nice design. Look, real, real scabrous, scabrous, it's like sandpaper, real nice texture with those purple streaks. Some of the, some of the goddamn, you know, Asteraceae, you got 28,000 species and it's done, it's just done some crazy shit in a, you know, it's evolutionary history. Center of diversity, of course, is South America, then a couple, a couple of them made it over to the uh, African continent and then they went nuts there. You know, one came up gangbusters, speciated, evolved, diversified, whatever. And a couple of them came back over to, uh, over to the Americas after that. And then, uh, you know, some of them spread to the east. And you had, uh, what, 50 fucking million years to uh, evolve and come up with variations on a theme. And some of them were very successful. Don't even get me started on the silver swords in Hawaii, which, of course, evolved from what is a very small, diminutive annual that grows out in uh, California. You know, the tar weeds, but then you take them to Hawaii, you let them loose on an island, you get the island speciation effect, they come up with all kinds of different, uh, all different, uh, you know, goofy ideas about what to do. One of them decided it was going to evolve into this six foot tall uh, monocarpic plant that lives for 30 years, flowers, and then dies, whose foliage is just, you know, bright blue and glandular, and uh, which grows on a, which grows on a volcanic, uh, the high elevation volcanoes, you know, just barren, rocky lava racks and shit. Asteraceae is a wonderful family, and Smolanthus uh, maculatus is just more proof of that. Go fuck yourself.